So my t- the title of my talk today is um, Insights of an IT Entrepreneur. Um, I really wanted to create a template for you guys to follow, but uh, every entrepreneur's journey is different. So I can't give you a template. So I, I can merely relate to you my experience, my thoughts as I learned them, and hopefully you'll learn from them, from the steps that I took. Um, so we'll start with uh, the things that will be covered. Uh, first, of course, um, my journey. Um, what my thinking process was during each step of the journey. What was my evaluation of here, each chapter of each business, the skill sets that I acquired, and lastly, my final thoughts, and then I'll open myself for questions. Okay. Um, so we'll keep it informal uh, since this is more of a storytelling session because there isn't really a strict framework of what you need to do to become an entrepreneur. Um for me, it's a series of circumstances. So, uh, but there are a few tips and tricks that can share with you in case you want to go into that particular lifestyle. So first, um, the first one was uh, my career computer rental. I did it all myself. I got a small loan. <clears throat> However, my duties were, I was a glorified employee. <clears throat> The profit was shared from the person who got, who gave me the loan. Um, the location of the business was, uh, let's let's say it's not in a very affluent place in Paranaque. <laughs> so um, why did I choose to become um, a computer rental uh, entrepreneur? Well, because I was young and optimistic. And I love playing games. And I thought I, if I do what I love, I'll make money off it. However, I became a glorified employee. Um, my duties consisted of IT administrator. Uh, I was a janitor, an accountant. Because of the long hours, I, could, I couldn't do any, pursue anything else. Um, so much so that my lunch break was a two-minute run to the store next door para mababantayin ko pa rin yung store ko pagbalik. Kasi yun nga. It was in a very difficult neighborhood. So after a few years of this, what did I learn? Well, first, I, had, I learned from scratch how to set up my own network. Nobody taught me how to do that. So I had to sit down, read, apply what I've read. Second, time management. Because at this time, I was still trying to finish uh, additional subjects to get my business management course down and tied. I was also dating my then girlfriend, my now wife. So, ang hirap because ang tabaho ko noon, nagpubukas yung cafe ko ng alas 8 ng umaga nagpuklose ng, ng 10. So, it's not, it was not just a 9 to 5 work. It was a 8 to 10 work. Second, I learned to deal with difficult people. What was what's difficult people? Well, difficult people are first uh, people who make uh, ridiculous demands, especially in the internet cafe, and others are non techy customers. May lolo ako na kailang email niya yung apun niya na nasa California. Maglalakad siya papunta sa internet cafe. Nagpapagawa siya sa akin ng Google Google account. Tapos inaasahan pa niya na ako mag-aalala ng kanyang username at password. So, kanyang kasing ng techie people. So, there were a lot of them. Next, uh, I learned to do my own accounting, which is very important. Kasi I'm not an accounting graduate. Um, I'm an ORCOM graduate. May joke nga kami dati pag tinatanong kami, what is an ORCOM graduate? Sinasabi namin yung gumaganong ganun sa aeroplano, uh, kami yun. Pero joke lang. <laughs> Kasi hindi namin ma-define kung ano yung ORCOM to most people. Essentially, we study communication. It's more management within an organization. Next, I, I learned how to run 
a small business. May feedback ata konti? Yan, I learned how to run a small business which Ayan. Uh, so, lastly, I learned how to run a small business, which is a very difficult thing to do on your own. Especially, kasi back then, wala akong karelyebo. I had to do this on my own. And lastly, uh, even long hours of practice, I was terrible at Counter-Strike. So, I had no future as a, a esports gamer. <laughs> All right. So after a while, um, my brother-in-law told me of an opportunity that I can get into. Um, what was this opportunity? Um, he told me that he could get me into a company if I just buy in. Uh, this company is um, what we call Max Speed Quality Scripts International. But I had to buy in, meaning I had to sell off all my assets from Pinoy Gaming. Uh, from uh, Micronel. So I sold everything. I sold all the computers, the network. I sold the business. And uh, I bought into a transcription company. So what's a trans- transcription company? Uh, back then, kasi, there were no direct AI-driven uh, voice, voice to, to text, speech to text translations. Like when you talk to OK Google, when you talk to Amazon, and when you talk to your Apple iPhone, Siri, there were not there was nothing like that back then. So doctors had to talk to um, recording devices, and they would send those files to us, and our company would type those down and turn them into documents. So this is where patient records would come in. Um. This is what we call the transcription company. However, the transcription company wasn't doing that well. So I found an opportunity to create something new with it. And I created a video captioning department. Video captioning is, um, yung pag manonood kayo ng movies, nagsasubtitles kayo minsan, lalo na pag medyo maingay. Uh, we were the ones who would do that. So people would send us movies, videos, TV episodes with We'd put captions on them for not just for people who want subtitles, but also for especially for people who are hard of hearing. <clears throat> so I learned how to deal with partners and client hospitals back then as well. To say I traveled to um, many hospitals around Metro Manila, um, telling them about our services. How can we make their patient records better? And second, um, uh, Uh, we the business needed help uh, finding an opportunity in closed captioning for ABS-CBN and GMA. So nat- natuto rin ako pumunta sa ABS-CBN at GMA and talk to them and telling them that we can put subtitles in their ano, uh, mga, uh, TV programs. And of course, the last I got bored. That's not a misspelling. I actually got bored in meetings. <laughs> Ang haba eh. So what, what were my insights? Well, first, software acquisition. Because when when we started the video captioning department, they had no players, they had no particular software to to use, they had nothing, zero. So I had to acquire, test out, and had my people test this software out. Second, I learned to handle personnel, from a person who was a one man employee. To a person now handling a team was a very big transition for me. I had to deal with conflict. I had to deal with uh, how one one particular person does one thing and another person the other. So uh, these are things that I had to learn for myself. And I created processes, pre-processes. Especially the uh, video captioning. Um, 
before mag-start, ano kailangan nilang mga tools? Ano mga kailangan nilang skills? These are the things that I had to determine. Second, during the work proper, uh, how are they going to go about the work? Saan magagaling yung files? Saan nila isi-save? I- 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 nilalagay ko yan lahat sa same document. And of course, evaluating processes. Anong maganda? Anong pangit? How do we improve? So I had to learn I had to learn to create these processes for every single depart for the department itself. Next, I dealt with even more difficult people. Uh, who are these people? Well, these people who are uh, very uh, in demand of your time. Kasi we are now beholden to clients. Eh. So there are people who simply cannot adjust and don't realize that business is people. So they would make demands like it, you're robotic and since it's a business-to-business thing, um, it was pretty difficult to deal with that kind of demand. And lastly, I learned to deal business-to-business. So um, back then, there were not a lot of BPOs. Wala pa namang masyadong call centers noon eh. Uh, business process outsourcing companies, we had no agents. So why did it fail? Why did a mark... Mar- Max Speed closed a few years after I joined it. Why did it fail? Um, the lesson there is the main business of medical subscription relied on getting clients from an uh, an affiliate instead of marketing it ourselves. Back then, wala wala pang masyadong pumupunta sa ibang bansa to market BPOs. Eh. Ano lang, naghihintay lang kami ng isang guy na nag-distribute ang trabaho. So ultimately, we, out, we ran out of work. We had so much overhead kasi Uh, marami kaming ano marami kaming employees so it ultimately failed but uh, again every failed business is just a lesson to be learned i moved on to another business which i think many of you will be able to relate to um back then when i was in max speed um i wrote a regular article for pinoy gaming network about my adventures as uh, no as a gamer in Ragnarok Online. So I call this uh, uh, Chronicles of the Paladin Chronicles, something like that many years ago. Um, I started writing, but my partners and I, uh, including one of your uh, teachers here, Mr. Jericho Vlog, we wanted to build, build more. So he didn't be satisfied with just creating articles. So what did we do? Um, we moved to review other games. So when a game was released, we'd review it and we'd release it to the public. Um, we became so good at it that we created partnerships with e-games and Level Up and late, later on Data Blitz. Eventually, we grew so big that we we were recognized as the Pinoy gaming community. So if you want to talk to Pinoy gamers, you talk to us and we'll bring the gamers to you or we'll bring you to the gamers. Um, it It, it was so good that um, brands would brands would approach us, including politicians. So you might recognize a few faces, faces here. Ayan. So may, may media ID na kami. So we grew that big. Um, that's uh, Chisis Codero when he was trying to find out how, how gamers think and how he can appeal to gamers and what gamers wanted. So Uh, we were all over the place. Uh, in fact, um, Data Blitz would regularly call us and ask us to review a game of theirs. So, what hap- what, what are the insights that I learned from Pinoy Gaming? Well, number one is pivot till you find your niche. On your first try, people may not like what you have to offer, but you keep pivoting uh, just till you get it right. So why do I say that? We started Pinoy Gaming basically just posting articles. After that, we posted reviews. After that, nalaman namin maraming ayaw magbasa. So we moved to podcasting and video casting. And even that, wala na masyadong nag-anon, nanonood. Anong pinapanood nila ngayon? Streamers na. So what do we, what did we do in Pinoy Gaming? Um, the elder people win Pinoy Gaming, like me and Boss Jericho, What we did was they handed out to a younger generation and now they manage streamers for us. Many talents that uh, stream their gameplay 
And ho- hopefully one day when we have uh, we have gained enough uh, ground in the streaming world, we will be able to bring in sponsors and get get these people money for their efforts, and we get a little cut off off, off of that. So we kept pivoting until we find whatever people want. Number two, find people you trust. Because in Pinoy Gaming, kasi, um, it is very a very collaborative effort. Unlike my, my Cronel, my first business, I was the only one doing it. Here, since somebody else contributes, somebody else creates the content, you curate it, somebody else goes to the events and covers it. So you have to find people that you do trust. Second, never settle till you're happy with where you are. So uh, why do I say that? I'll, I'll go back to that a little later when, um, a little later in the talk. But that's an insight that's very important, but I'd like to call your attention to it for now, but later I'll explain it. Okay. And this one is, if 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 you come away with something, uh, there will be three things that I will tell you by the end of this talk. That's very important if you want to become an entrepreneur, and this is one of them. Networking. Pinoy Gaming grew big because Jericho and I attended events from Level Up, from eGames, brands like Samsung, Huawei. We got to know people. When we got to know these people, we made friends with them. Um, then when they want to talk to gamers, they remember us. So it's all about networking. Build your network. Because even if it's from people from different industry, the mere fact that they know you, they recognize you, they know what you're about, it helps. Lastly, nothing is too big and aim high. Um to tell you the truth, is a, that goes with the last one. Never let Hia stop you. Because back then, um, when we were when we were in, in certain events that um, certain events that il, uh, invited their executives and celebrities around, pakapala na mukha, I interviewed the executives, celebrities, athletes, and Ano lang ba kami ang Pinoy Gaming? We were just a web magazine. Pero nakapasok kami sa press booth. Katabi namin ang GMA7, INQ7. Kasi media rin kami. No matter how small we were, uh, we were part of that landscape. So, no matter kung sino yung katabi mo, don't get intimidated. Never let Kia stop you. Go for it. Be one of the big guys. Kaya, e- even back then, may mga celebrities kami na meet nung say hello dyan, na-meet namin, na-interview namin, um, kahit nung nene pa siya. So, those are the insights from Pinoy Gaming. Next, we move on to Hangat IT Solutions. So, this comes with a story. Um, Hangat IT Solutions started because uh, Jer- Mr. Jericho Vlog here would make websites and they would pay him 500 pesos load. Either load sa cellphone or load sa Ragnarok Online. Yun lang binabayad sa kanya. I looked it up and I found out that websites cost uh, 20,000, 50,000, 60,000, 200,000 pesos. So parang what? why is he being paid 500? So I talked to him I told him, if I can get you clients, can you do this? He said yes, and we became partners. So our our first client was uh, tita ng friend ng, asa, ng magiging asawa ko. And back then, I did not know how to say no. So pina-edit nila sa amin yung lahat ng pictures na ilalagay sa website nila. There were a hundred pictures, and we had to edit out all the wires from the houses yung electrical wires. <laughs> Hindi isa-isa namin yun. Kasi we really wanted to have a name for ourselves. Um, our second big client was we, for a Canadian person who visited the Philippines and found out we made websites. So he 
had us made uh, GL Playground back then. Um, it was a gay dating site. So when the he when he had us build it, sabi namin none of us were gay. So kami naman we approximated what a gay person would think of to be a good website. We built it. We showed it to the client, and the gay client told us it was too gay. <laughs> so, we overshot our target. So these are lessons that we learned. Um, so what did we do after that? We decided to build. Uh, we find we found clients in the silliest of places. You go ateneo.com. Um, the very first deployment of goateneo.com kami gumawa. I don't know who built it for them now, but back then that was us. Um, I wasn't satisfied of just going making websites, so I signed up for a course in digital marketing. So I am now a, a certified e-marketing consultant and I added that to our repertoire. Um, then we expanded to e-commerce. So we learned how to do uh, e-commerce websites, shopping carts, how to tie that to a payment gateway. And we offer that to our clients. So we've been expanding all these years. Um, Hangat is still around and we serve uh, several clients from different countries. We have a client in the United States. We have a client in Canada. We have a client in Australia. And it's still going. Um, I still consult with Boss Jericho for, from time to time, especially when migrating websites. So what did I learn from Hangad? First is diversify. Find related services to your main business. Sabi nga nila, pag magbibenta ka ng pulburon, magbenta ka rin ng maiinom. It applies to IT as well. Kung malapit sa business mo, learn the skill and offer it. In IT and software, I learned it's not about skill set also. But the willingness to learn. Kasi these days, people would ask for dapat full stack developer ka. Ito yung kailangan mo, ito yung kailangan mo, ito yung kailangan mo. I find that, I find that the easy way of getting somebody, pero that somebody may not last in your company long. What I learned is that you take somebody who's very eager to learn and that person will stay with you a long, long time. Kasi you just feed them information. You feed them challenges. Um, to illustrate, one of our partners, uh, uh, si Johan, was a PSD slicer. It's a slice na siya ng images and uh, somebody else would put it on the front end of the website. Um, but uh, with us, he learned to do Drupal. He learned to do backend. And later on, he became a manager. He started managing teams. So instead of looking for what's more important to me, and this is just me, I don't know if uh, it applies to everybody else. It's not the skill set, but it's the willingness of the person to learn. Number two, uh, top that network and keep building it. Remember the network that I told you about when it comes to Pinoy Gaming? Most, many of our clients from Hangad came from that same network. Someone pointed to somebody else, someone pointed to somebody else until we came into a, a, a client that wanted our services. Next, find avenues for profit. Um, that This is one of those insights that um, we're already making websites, might as well um, create e an e-commerce platform for our clients. When we had that, um, sometimes we had X deals. Um, even if it's just a little bit of profit uh, for a little bit of work, it helps as long as you establish a network from it. And lastly, settling is death. For any business, when it's running well, and you just let it run without improving on it, without uh, pivoting, without taking more, without finding avenues and niches, saka namamatay ang negosyo. So, um, before I leave you with my final thoughts, um, 
I, these thoughts that I'm about to show you is not literally a general guideline to become an entrepreneur, but these are what I've learned, and I hope you learn from them. Because um, this this is almost almost 20 years of experience that I'm talking about establishing, moving, creating, and sometimes letting go. So first, limits are arbitrary. Usually limits can be surpassed by learning, acquiring new skills, or meeting new people who have that skill. If you don't have it, find someone who has. If you're not if you can't learn it on time, find someone who has. But if you can learn it, learn it yourself. Second, entrepreneurship is about people, not money. Kung nagdenegosyo ka sa IT, because it will be harder for you if you're doing that just for the money. It will be hard to last. Kasi it will all about it will be about margins. It will but this is about you the people you choose to work with, your clients, your customers, and your publics. So, um, wh- what I mean with this is, um, when you better yourself, your business becomes better. When you choose the right people to surround yourself with the right people, your business becomes better. If you find the right clients, if you find the right customers, and you address your public properly, Profit comes when everything else is in place. So these two are related. Once, when your business is ready to do the work properly, profit usually comes in. If it doesn't, you're missing something. You're missing location. You may be missing a process. You may be missing a particular skill that you need to learn. So if it doesn't work, Find that missing piece. Try again. So we go with fear is the mind killer. This is a quote from Frank Herbert in Dune. Um, usually it's the fear of failure. Um, what I did was, ako rin natatakot din ako dati when I start a new business because it, it, it involves risk talaga. So what you do is you mitigate the fear by not going all in. You start slow and you work yourself to it. Just th- but the most important thing is to take that first step. Once you take, you've taken that first step, the next step will be very logical. And the next step after that, and the next step after that. So, failure is part of the calling. Kasi. Um, I've had many failures. Marami ako mga negosyo na hindi nag-take off. Booklat was one of them. Um, Booklat was a an effort of mine to retail um, textbooks pero hindi nag take off mahilig kasi ako magbasa so i thought a lot of people would like that too but apparently not not that many the other one was geek gear geek gear was apparel designed for geeks so mga ano mga kagikihan ng mga t-shirts polo shirts for professionals so you will fail. Three out of five businesses fail. And that's the current rate right now. Pero it's not a total failure if you learn from it. Lastly, your businesses, and most especially you, are a work in progress. So never stop being a student. Even now, ako nagsasign up pa rin ako sa mga online classes. Because I want to learn more. I want to do more. I want to be able to impart more. So um, businesses kasi are very dependent on the people who run them. Because that's why I say that entrepreneurship is about people, not money. If you have the right people, if you are the right person to run the particular business that you want to run, your business will become a success. But if not, ganun lang talaga. Um, Mga tao na nag-survive during the pandemic, um, when I say tao, I mean businesses. The businesses who survived during the pandemic are either the bigger ones or the ones who learned how to pivot and and still make a profit 
even when the pandemic was around it was because they invested on themselves they invested on an idea so yun so what am i doing right now right now as a person while Angad is still running I'm actually um, in the last few sessions I will have myself certified BVOP is that's a business value oriented project management that's what I'm trying I'm working on myself right now um, it's merely a certification but I've been doing the job for the for the longest time might as well get certified for it Um, number two, I'm learning to type faster than 120 words per minute. I'm currently at 100 words per minute. I'm pretty sure a lot of you can type faster than I can, but it's just something that I'm trying to learn. And number three, and just to illustrate that uh, I'm always a work in progress and so should your business and so should you be. I'm also studying aviation and flight. So I'll be taking the ground school exam. I'm pretty sure we'll pass it. And after I get my flight hours, actual flight hours, I'll have my pilot's license already. Why am I doing this? I'm not trying to become a pilot. I just want to do this because I want to improve. I want to learn a skill. If you're interested in something, try and acquire that skill. Go all in. When you're starting a business, start slow. Don't forget to take that first step. Nakakatakot talaga magnegosyo, especially in IT where there is a lot of risk. But if you again consider that fear is the mind killer, consider that failure is part of the calling as long as you're not risking every egg in your basket to do it. Just try and improve upon yourself. And just as a disclosure, um in A few months from now or a year from now, I may be letting go of Hangad IT Solutions, my main breadwinner. I, I might let go of that and assign it to uh, my partners because I'm going on a different journey with my family, in a different land. And when I get there, I don't know where, where, I, where I'm going, but I'm pretty sure I'm skilled enough to find something to feed my family. <laughs> so <coughs> I might even... build something new when I get there. For more ICCT College's video updates, please subscribe and click the notification button.